Here I've recorded a chopstick being rammed around the inside of a washing basket. And I'll select a section of the audio that I want to use and then by pressing and holding the option key on the computer keyboard I'll click, hold and drag a copy of the selection into a new track. And I'm drawing in some volume automation using the utility device and then I'll freeze and flatten the track. And I'm doing that just to trim off the unwanted audio from the file and to consolidate the volume automation into the clip. And here's how the edited clip now sounds. In the clip's sample editor there are small grey arrows which are called pseudo warp markers and these are where Ableton has detected that the transient of each sound begins and the pseudo warp markers will provide Ableton with information about velocity and timing for the groove file. So to extract the groove from the file, right click on it and select Extract Groove. The groove file is then placed in the project's groove pool and this is accessed by using the shortcut Option Command G or by clicking on this little icon here. And the name of the groove file will be the same as the audio file and to rename the groove file, right click on it and select Rename. or use the shortcut Command R. Okay, so here's a MIDI track which contains a couple of samplers and I've loaded some audio into them and added a couple of effects. And for now, I'm going to ignore the options in the groove pool and just drag and drop the groove file directly onto the MIDI track. So when a groove file is imported onto a MIDI track by default, it'll create a MIDI clip with all of the MIDI notes placed on C1 on the piano roll. And by default, the root note on Ableton sampler is set to C3, which means to hear the audio at its original pitch, I either need to set the root note on sampler to C1 or shift the MIDI notes up two octaves to C3 in the MIDI note editor. And to do that, click on C1 in the piano roll, which will select all of the MIDI notes in the C1 range and then on your computer keyboard, press and hold the shift key and then press the arrow up button twice. And here's how it sounds. So you can see that the MIDI notes match up with the positions of the transients in the audio clip and that the velocity ramp in the MIDI note editor matches the increase in volume in the audio clip. So here's the original audio layered with the MIDI track and a kick drum. Okay, one thing to point out here is that if you're using a MIDI instrument which has a volume to velocity parameter, then you'll probably need to adjust it to make sure the instrument detects velocity information from MIDI signals. So here's the wash basket MIDI clip again, but this time there's different audio loaded into sampler and I'll play the clip with the velocity to volume value set to zero. All right, as you can hear, sampler isn't detecting the velocity information in the MIDI clip, but it does if I set the velocity to volume parameter to 100%.